Good to see you out in the house of the Lord this morning. Praise God, I'm looking and expecting great things this morning. Good to see you. Good to see you, young man. Been thinking about you. Good to see you and your wife back. Joshua, glad you, uh, glad you brought your mama back. Uh, I'm glad to get to see you before you head out. She's heading out this evening. We're, gonna, uh, we're just going to go ahead and say it. We're praying for traveling grace and mercy. Amen. But so good to have you. Love that beautiful, is that not a beautiful smile? Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So good to have you. Brother Bobby, Sister Nancy, we love you. Praying for you. Know you're going through a lot. But God is able. We know where our strength comes from. Good to see Bubba and April here this morning. Always good to have them. Amen. Good to see our sister back this morning with her beautiful children. Good to have each and every one out. You know, if you start calling names, you're going to forget somebody and you'll get in trouble. Amen, Sister Tina. But, you know, we'll do the best we can do. We'll, <laughs> we'll keep pressing on, right? Amen. So good to have you this morning. Amen. Let me just get into the announcements this morning. Got a few of them. Uh, Sister Tangie is going to be breaking the bread of life tonight. Amen. And you notice she was really quiet this morning. We won't get into that. She'll talk a little bit more about that tonight. Amen. But we mentioned the other day about who knows what's happening this coming Sunday besides revival. Time change. Time change. Amen. So make sure you don't forget to set your clocks for Sunday. Amen. Also, let me remind you, we have a revival coming this next week, all week. So if you can't make preparations, do your planning to get out and vote. By all means, make sure you vote. Amen. And revival. We talked about revival. Continue to pray and fast right on up to revival. Looking and expecting a move of God with this young man, mighty man of God. Uh, only because he serves a mighty God. But he's obedient and he lives the life. Amen. And he does what it takes uh, for God to use him. Amen. And God does use him in the gifts and uh, I encourage you, come out, be prepared next week to come out and be in revival with us, amen. I believe, and I'll, I'll go out, uh, I'll say it by faith, I believe if you'll come that you'll receive of God. Amen, I, I believe that, amen. I'm expecting, looking, we've been in prayer for that, uh, uh, leading up to this revival, amen. And I can't wait to see what Brother Chris and Sister Amanda have for us. Amen. Because I've been praying for God to give them uh, not just a word, but the word for Elgin. Amen. That God would give them the word that we need to hear. I'm so excited uh, for that to be coming up. We've waited and it's here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me just say this also, that we're going to be taking up some donations. We have did that. Uh, and I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Johnny, are we still, we still doing doing that. We're, we're putting any donations, uh, uh, goods to go to North Carolina for uh, in the old sanctuary in the back over to the side. But also, uh, the ladies are doing something in addition to that. They're taking up uh, donations of gloves, socks, hats, hand warmers. And they're also going to take up, uh, and these can be used but make sure you don't just bring anything, you know, clean, but they can be good. Make sure they're good and you, if they're used or whatever, new, however you want to do it. But hoodies, coats, sweatshirts, amen. Cold weather's coming. Uh, it, we need to get them here. Same thing, old sanctuary in the back, amen. Put them there, stack them on the back pews. And, uh, but we need them here by the 14th, by November the 14th, amen, and they're going to be, they, we have to have them there so they can get them sent out, amen, and that's a need, amen. Uh, you know, I, I, I take a little bit of time every week, but I think it's worth doing. You know, a lot of times something can happen in the newness, in the emotion of it, that we get caught up in the emotion, and we do, but all of a sudden we forget, amen, but the need is still there. That, that, you know, like I said it last week, you go from, uh, you know, your needs change, 
you know, they get water, they get food, but now cold weather, you're up in the mountains, you know it's cold. That's a whole other, another set of circumstances that they're dealing with. So if you are able to donate to this cause, please do. Amen. Praise God. Y'all ready for the service this morning? Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're going to take up prayer requests. Is there any outspoken request in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Amen. Absolutely. Thank you, Lord, for that. Amen. Answer prayer. Give God praise in the house. Amen. Any other outspoken request in the house of the Lord? Sister Emma. Yes. Amen. I, li I like the direction this is heading in. Amen. Mm -hmm. Any other? Go ahead, Brother Bruce. Praise report. Amen. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. Any other? Let's continue to remember Sister Peggy. Amen. Let's remember her. Let's hold her up in prayer. She needs a physical touch in her body. Amen. Any other outspoken request, Paula? Well, I remember a lady I worked with, her husband had bladder cancer. They did surgery on Friday. We were praying and lifting him up. And she had bladder cancer. 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 Okay. Amen. Amen. Any other outspoken request? In Brother the house? Warren, I yes. want us to remember a uh, man, Gary's friend, David Bunton. His wife called yesterday. I don't think he's going to make it through something with his diabetes. Judy, is that the one that used to come occasionally in the old church? And we every prayed for his wife, first wife that died. Yeah. Yes. I remember David. Amen. Let's remember David. Any other outspoken request? Emma says Sister Luke's legs bothered her real bad. So let's keep her in Let's continue to remember her. Uh, God put it on my heart the other day, and I was praying, and I prayed especially for her. But let's continue to hold her up. Amen. Remember a young man named uh, Landon who got heart problems at <clears throat> 16 years old. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Amen. So again, I'll just take just a second to do this, and I know we're taking time up. But sister, you had mentioned the other day about her walking, and you said, sister, you just have to get over your pride and use that stick. Amen. But but she's using it. But you know, God is able to touch her. By faith, I declare and decree that she shall overcome this. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we pray and for Sister Luke. Uh, my prayer for her is that she can enjoy these latter years and to be able to evangelize and continue to do the work of God without that body failing her and collapsing underneath her. In the name of Jesus, we declare victory over this situation. Amen. Praise God. If, there's any, if there isn't any other outspoken request, maybe you have a special unspoken by an uplifting of hand this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me just say this, Bubba, while I'm thinking about it, let's continue to remember Roger Carter. Remember him. May the Lord touch him. A special young man to come with Bubba here not long ago. Let's remember him. Amen. If you're able this morning, stand with me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sister Paula, lead us to the Lord in prayer this morning. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord God, by faith believe in, Lord God, that when we pray that you hear us. God, we pray, God, with confidence, boldness, Lord God, in the finished work of the cross. By the blood of the Lamb, Lord God, we call out to you. 
that your word says you was wounded for our transgressions, you was bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace is upon you. And Lord, the Bible says, and with your stripes we are healed. We declare and decree this morning, God, that the word of God is alive and well, and we stand on the promises of God, asking, trusting, and believing, Father, God, that when we pray that you hear us, uh, for the word says that your ear is not heavy, and God, that you can't hear, and your arm is not short, uh, that you can't reach down and touch every request. God, every petition, Lord God, uh, Lord, every family here this morning, God, uh, every head that's darkened the doorway of the church, uh, Lord, we just ask you, God, uh, to move in a special way. Father, we thank you this morning, God, for the praise reports. God, we thank you, Lord, for what you've already done, what you're doing here and now, and what you're going to do. Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory, and thanksgiving for it ahead of time, because we know that you're able this morning. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, to God be the glory. Give him praise in the house. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Sister Judy. Let's help her to sing this morning. Some black man should see Jesus in the air. Come after you and me, joyful out to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints arrive. Jubilee, it's yonder in the sky. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. Seems that now I almost see all the saints dead. Right before that jubilee, that is just ahead. In the twinkling of an eye, change within shall be. All living saints who ride yet to that jubilee. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting. On the happy morning when we all shall rise, oh, oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. When with all the heavenly hope we begin to sing, yes, singing in the Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Join that song with them we shall be. Praise the Christ through ages long, it's heaven to believe. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, on the happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, oh, what glory. Savior in the sky. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can I have the ushers this morning? I did forget one announcement. There will be no drama practice today. No Christmas drama practice for today. <coughs> no men's fellowship coming this Saturday because we have revival. So we mark that on your calendars. Amen. No practice today. No men's fellowship this coming Saturday. Amen. Amen. Brother Bruce, would you pray over the word this morning or the tithes and offering this morning? Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. All I can say is hallelujah. Oh Lord, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. All I can say is hallelujah. He put my feet 
Let's give him the praise that he needs and works. Give God the praise. Give God the praise. Yes, you praise him when you're weak. You praise when you're strong. Give God the praise. Yes, give God the praise. When everything that breath, praise the Lord. One more time. Give God the praise. Yes, give God the praise. Yes, you praise him when you're weak. Yes, you praise him when you're strong. Give God the praise. Yes, give God the praise. Let everything have prayer. Praise the Lord. Go do that again. Give God the praise. Yes, give God the praise. Yes, you praise him when you're weak. You praise him when you're strong. Go and praise His name. Go and lift your holy head. Go and worship the King. Go and worship the King. Go and praise His name. Go and lift your holy head. Go and worship the King. Go and worship the King. Go and praise His name. Go and lift your holy head. Praise Him in the morning, praise Him in the evening, praise Him all day long. Lift up the mighty name of Jesus, sing and shout a song of worship the King. Gonna praise His name, gonna lift up holy hands, gonna worship the King. Give God your praise, yes, give God. You praise Him when you're strong. Give God the praise. Yes, give God the praise. Let everything have breath. Praise the Lord. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the evening. Praise Him all day long. Yes, lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Sing and shout a song. Lord, worship the King. Worship the King. Go to praise His name. Go to lift up holy hands. Go to worship the King. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the evening. Praise Him all day long. Yes, lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Sing and shout a song. Go to worship the King. Go to praise His name. Go to lift up holy hands. church are you ready to have church this morning hallelujah 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 do you feel him in the house this morning uh, i feel the presence of the master in the house this morning uh, brother jimmy i feel the presence of god in the house this morning amen praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord, praise the lord. Praise the lord. hallelujah ah oh, we serve a good god this morning we serve a wonderful and almighty, precious, precious King. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just, just give Him praise in the house. Just go ahead and give Him a, a sacrifice of praise this morning. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Sister Diane, I thank God for the anointing of the Holy Ghost of God. 
I am so thankful that we don't serve a dead God. We can serve a God oh, that we can touch. We can feel the tangible touch of the Master. Amen. Ah, they can keep their old dead gods. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. We love you. Amen. Have your way in this house this morning. Amen. Kaylee, if you can, pull up them scriptures for me, sweetheart. Amen. I want to talk to you for a little while this morning. On the cave of Adullam. The cave of Adullam. We're going to find our text. If you're able this morning, stand for the reading of God's sacred word this morning. Just a few scriptures out of 1 Samuel chapter 22, beginning with verse 1 through 4. Just a couple of verses this morning. Give you a second to get there. Amen. Hallelujah. I encourage you to bring your Bibles. Amen. A soldier needs its sword. Amen. What soldier goes to war and doesn't carry his sword with him? Amen. Praise God. If you're there, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Beginning in verse 1, 1 Samuel chapter 22 says this, David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about four hundred men. And David went thence to Mizpah of Moab, and he said unto the king of Moab, let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you. Notice these words here. Till I know what God will do for me. Verse 4. And he brought them before the king of Moab. And they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the hold of the cave of Adullam. Amen. Sister Tangie, would you pray over the reading of God's word this morning? Have your way. And as our pastor has prepared, he has your faith, God, and behind that cross of Calvary, God, mm, have your way, Holy Ghost. Grant it, Lord. Ah, Lord, Lord, give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to receive thy blessed word. Oh, thy word is truth. Hallelujah. Lord God, comfort the afflicted and afflict the comforted this morning. Grant it, Lord. Ah, yes, Lord. Yes. Amen. Look to somebody and say, It's so good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Look to the other side. You look, tell them you look like a child of the Master. Amen. Say, I don't know what you come to do, but I come to worship the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. I feel good in my spirit this morning, Sister Cindy. Amen. God is good. You hear it said oftentimes, Brother Sean, but I'm telling you this morning, I could go home right now and say that I've been in church this morning. My God, I feel the Lord this morning. I enjoyed uh, what I called a Sunday school. Amen. I stayed in the back long enough for Sister Stephanie to get through with her lesson this morning. Amen. Do you love him, church? Hallelujah. Let's get into this message this morning. Talking about the cave of Adullam. Amen. The cave places David at a crossroads between his past and his future. It is here that David seeks refuge. Amen. David went through a lot. 
David had, had seen a lot uh, and he got caught up in the crossfires uh, of, of life uh, and being anointed uh, king. Amen. Sister Tangie, when there's an anointing on your life, you are a marked individual. I'll tell you that this morning. If you're going to carry the anointing, you're a marked individual this morning. But that's okay. Amen. Because greater is he that is in us uh, than he that is in the world. Amen. We're talking about the cave of Adullam this morning, Sister Cheyenne. You break that word down and Adula means to turn aside. It suggests that Adullam means a retreat or a refuge. Amen. Praise God. I'm excited where I'm going here this morning, brother. Amen. It is a secret place. So often when we think of a secret place... Brother Travis, we think about the prayer closet. But a secret place is anywhere that you can get alone with God and you can meditate on Him and He can speak to you. Amen. It is a secret place. You might say it this way. In Christ Jesus. Amen. In Christ Jesus. It is a turning point. A place of emptiness where you have nothing to offer God but yourself. Have you ever been there, church? Have you ever been to where you feel so stripped down? You feel so broken and battered that you feel like, God, I am worthless, amen. But here am I, Lord. Do with me what you can. Take this little bit. I'm so glad, Brother Mike, that the Bible said little is much when Christ ended, amen. I don't have much to offer God, but I'm willing to give Him what I got. Amen. And I'm a work in progress. I'm not where I need to be, Sister Heidi, but praise God, I'm not where I used to be. I'm on, I'm on a journey. Amen. I'm looking for a city which have, have, which have foundations whose builder and maker is God this morning. Do you love Him? Praise God. It is in this place you will battle let me slow it down. I want you to hear me this morning. It is in this place uh, you will battle discouragement, loneliness, fear, and offense. Scholars debate on how long David uh, was uh, staying or how long he, he was in the stronghold of Adullam. But Sister Tangie once suggests uh, it was about nine months, uh, which I find extremely interesting. That is the time of a full term of a child to be born. Uh, we're talking about a new life. Amen. Uh, I, I don't know if there's anybody in here that is looking for a new life uh, in Christ Jesus. Amen. But I'm telling you, God is calling to those individuals that are willing to trust Him this morning. Is that you this morning? Hallelujah. Sister Stephanie, you said they were quiet this morning. I, I, I hope it's because they're listening. But I'm talking to you this morning. Amen. Stay with me this morning. I believe God is sending the church a message this morning. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It is in that place uh, of isolation and brokenness uh, before God that we find Him. You're not going to find Him in the clutter of the crowd. Amen. You're not going to find Him when you're all lifted up and feeling like you're somebody. Amen. But when you're in isolation and you're going through the storms of life and you reach a place of brokenness, praise God, when you get to that place that when you don't have no answers, you can't find no answers and nobody is around to help you. Sister Diane, it's that place uh, that we will find God and God will come to you. Hallelujah. It was in the cave of Adullam uh, that David wrote Psalms uh, 34. Praise God. Talks about the Lord hears the righteous. Do you know the Lord hears the righteous this morning? You don't have to worry or be fearful. Amen. Of what might come upon you. Amen. Because God hears uh, those with the clean hands and an upright heart. He hears you this morning. He wrote Psalms 34 when he was in the cave of Adullam. He wrote Psalms 142. He said, Thou art my refuge. I I want to read this psalm to you, amen, to give you an idea of where David was as an individual. 
He said in verse 1, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, with my voice unto the Lord did I make supplication. I poured out my complaint before Him. I showed before Him my trouble. Do you have troubles this morning? When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. He knows your path. He knows what you're going through this morning. You don't have to tell anybody. God knows where you're at. He said, in the way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me. Amen. Does it seem like everywhere you go and everything you do, it's just like the whole world is against you. Amen. Some of you might not go through that. Some of you might not feel that. But I know that those that try to walk up right before God, those that desire to carry His anointing, goes through the storms of life daily. Amen. And it's going to cost you something to carry the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Oh, you might get tired and weary, but there is a place of rest for you and I this morning. David said, I looked on my right hand, and behold... There, but there was no man that would know me. What he was saying is uh, the enemy was after him on every front. Amen. And people wouldn't even acknowledge they knew him for fear of death. Amen. Have your friends forsaken you? Amen. Have they turned their back because you don't party and you don't do the things that you used to do? You don't hang out with the same places. You don't go to the same places. Hang out with the same old crowd. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said they wouldn't even acknowledge me. He said, I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion and the land of the living. He said unto the Lord, Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Amen. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Have you been fighting a battle? To where it seems like you're on the losing end. No matter what you got going on. Uh, Sister Johnny, it just seems like uh, your circumstances are just a little too heavy for you to bear. Amen. That's where David was. Uh, all stole away in this old cave by himself. Amen. Uh, I'm talking to somebody here this morning that's going through a trial. This message might not be for everybody. But it's for somebody who's looking for the Lord. Uh, and crying out for help in desperation this morning. Amen. He said, bring my soul out of prison that I may praise thee. The righteous shall surround me about for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. One thing I love about David, the Bible said he's a man after God's own heart. You began to read the Psalm, Sister April, and you will find David will lamb it lament and he will cry and he will pray but you will find that David knew how to pray until the praise come he knew how to pray until thanksgiving come amen because he prayed to somebody he knew that would hear him is that you this morning don't give up on your prayer before you get your answer this morning don't stop short of the victory this morning give him praise in the house Hallelujah. How many this morning know that God is everywhere? Amen. It's called uh, uh, omnipresent. Uh, God is everywhere. But I want you to know this morning that God does not meet people everywhere. Although God is everywhere, He's not going to meet you everywhere. He can. He meets people in the place, Sister Tangie, of His choosing. A place of consecration. A place, an atmosphere prepared for Him to be there. A secret place, if you will. That's why we sing praises. That's why we worship the Lord Become before we come up and break the bread of life. Because we desire His presence. It's not to be seen of man. It's not to put on the show. But it's to worship the One who keeps us and provides for us and has made a way of escape from this torment that's coming soon. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you love Him in the house this morning? Hallelujah. The Lord is constantly signaling 
for our attention. Did you know that this morning, church? God's trying to get your attention this morning. I'm reminded of Exodus 3, 3 and 4, Brother Sean. It said, but was uh, Moses uh, said, I will not turn aside until I see this great sight. He kept seeing the fire. He kept seeing the bush burning. Amen. But it wasn't until he said, listen, I've got to go see what that is that sits there and is burning. Is there something burning in your heart this morning? Amen. The Bible said in verse 4, And when the Lord saw that Moses turned aside to see, Amen, then God called to him. God's not going to run you down and chase you down out in the world somewhere. Amen. He's not going to meet you where you are. He's not going to speak to you until you turn aside to see him and to talk to him. And immediately when Moses turned and said, I am going to see, the Lord called out to, to Moses and he spoke to him. I like what David said in verse 3 after taking his father and mother to safety. He said to Mizpah, king of Moab, Please let them stay with you until I know what God will do for me. Are you curious to what God wants to do for you this morning? Sister Nancy, God wants to do something for you this morning. Amen. We need more men and women of God determined to shut themselves away and say, I am not moving until I get an answer or the word from the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Do you love Him this morning? So look with me for a moment this morning at David in the cave of Adullam. Here we find David is bunkered down in this stronghold with only the sword of Goliath. I didn't get back into that. But while he was fleeing, he went to the city of Nob. And amen. And in his haste, he asked the priest, he said, is there anything here, any weapon? He said, nothing but the Goliath sword that we have tucked away and put away. He said, give it to me. That's all he had. He was fleeing and that was the only protection he had. So there he was, amen, sitting there in the stronghold with only the sword of Goliath and his faith in the Lord, amen. Sometimes we think we don't have enough. Sometimes we think that we're not prepared for battle, amen. But here he was, sitting there, bound down, amen, all alone, all these thoughts. I can only think of the thoughts which must have been going on through his mind, deep down in that cave, amen. Sister Stephanie, you said something this morning in Sunday school, amen, and it made me think about reflecting and looking back, amen. Could you imagine David fleeing for his life, stuck down in a cave, Brother Travis, and looking at that big old huge sword that he used to cut off Goliath's head to, to wrought one of the biggest victories that we read in the Bible. Amen. It may have still been bloodstained. I don't know. But he's sitting there looking and he's thinking about past victories. He's thinking, oh, what must have been? Hey, what could have been? Is there somebody under the sound of my voice that is looking back and thinking, shoulda, woulda, coulda, if this would have happened uh, if this could have went this way if I would have took that job uh, if I would have married that person uh, if this hadn't have happened if that hadn't have happened amen don't you know that that's what David was doing he was looking back and he's seen this all the potential. Oh, the great victory. Did he not kill the bear and the lion? Did he not kill Goliath? What in the world is David doing back down in some cave, distraught, beaten, and broken? Amen. I'm talking to you this morning. I want to talk to you about the cave of Adullam this morning. David knew what the Lord had said to him. He knew what Samuel had done when he anointed him to be king. But David wasn't feeling much like a king right about now. Amen. Yet everything in David's life had come unraveled and seemed to be heading in the complete opposite direction. Is there anybody that can identify with David this morning? You know what the Word of God says. 
For the Bible said the promises of God are yea and amen. We read of the great victories, but why is it as children of God that we feel like, and we're going in the other way, Sister Shannon, we feel like we don't understand why it's got to be so hard. Amen. Oh, we sing hallelujah. Praise God. And we shout. Amen. And we go sit down. And we begin to think about our lost children. We think about our bank account. We think about our back hurting. We think about everything that's going on in our lives. Amen. Amen. And we know what God said. We know what His promises were. Amen. Amen this morning. The cave of Adullam represents a place in the life of David where he comes to the end of himself. Amen. That's what this message is all about. That's what the cave of Adullam is all about, Sister Tangi. Coming to the end of yourself. Amen. It represents a, a surrender, Sister Stephanie, you talked about. It represents a surrender to the Lord, a place where we quit trying to make God's plans and promises ourselves. Brother Jimmy, we try to work it out. We read the Bible and we say, I want it this way. I want God to do it this way. And Lord, you need to do it this way. Amen. But it's a place where we surrender and we let God bring to pass His own desires for our life. Ah, I'm preaching better than y'all letting on this morning. Hallelujah. God is wanting to do a work in some of the lives here this morning. But we have got to let God take over. Amen. I want you to indulge me just for a second. I'm going to use this analogy and I've used it several times here lately. So please indulge me this morning to use it one more time. Because I think it fits here in this situation. Talking about Brother Hootie and Undertow. Undertow in the water. You always hear that in the waters. You have these undertows. And undertow, the power of the water will push you down. Amen. And you are no match to resist it. Amen. You will drown in a matter of seconds if you don't get relief quickly. Amen. Just in a matter of seconds, uh, you can struggle, you can, you can fight, you can paddle all you want, and you're going to drown right there. But if you yield and do not resist the undertow, and you go with that undertow, letting the water work for you instead of against you, it will take you down, but don't fight it, go with it, amen, and it will bring you to safety. That's what God is trying to do to some of you here this morning. You're fighting with everything you got against what God has let happen in your life, and it's killing you, but if you would just let go and let God this morning, He's got a great victory just ahead for you. Amen. Give Him praise in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spiritually speaking, we must yield to God in that He has not called us. Uh, amen. God has not called us, Brother Sean, to do hard things. You say, what are you talking about, Brother Warren? God doesn't want you, Johnny, to do hard things because hard things requires for you to put more effort in it. Amen. God has not called us to do hard things, but God has called us to do impossible things. Things that we can't do on our own, Sister Gina. Why? Because impossible things require faith. We know we can't do it, amen. But we're looking to God to do that that we're not able to do within ourselves. Amen. Sister Nancy, we try to shake ourselves. We try to get over the hurt, amen, and the grief, amen, and it's hard. And you can't do it on your own. It's going to take the power of the Holy Ghost, amen, and by faith, casting your cares upon Him, amen. Zechariah 4 and 6 said, It's not by might nor by power, but it's by my Spirit, saith the Lord. Too many of God's people are flailing away in the water, about to drown. And God is trying to tell you to stand up 
it's only knee deep. Did you know that you can drown in knee deep water? But God said, just stand up. Trust in me this morning. You don't have to drown in something that He's equipped you to come out of. Amen. Praise God. Something happened uh, when David stopped running from the enemy and shut himself alone with God, Brother Sean. Amen. He finally got to the point, amen, that he got alone. Amen. I, I could go into some stuff that he went through, amen, but I won't do it for time's sake. But he got alone with God in this cave and he said to the king of Moab, he was waiting to hear how God would handle his situations. You know, Sister Gina, sometimes when we hold up God's word before him, I've said it before and I'll say it again. You can shout, you can scream, you can run the pews, you can get all emotional. Amen. God is not interested in that. You want to get God's attention, you really want to get God's attention, begin to quote his word back to him. God, you said. God, you said. Did not Jesus say to the enemy, it is written, it is written, it is written. Amen. And when we stand on the Word of God, then God begins to move and, and, and step, on, step in on our behalf this morning. Do you love Him? Amen. Give Him praise. Amen. David got along with God. And he had to hear from God. Perhaps what David's idea of being a king and God's idea of kingship was two different things. Maybe David thought, this is the way I handled the kingship. Maybe Brother Warren is saying, this is the way I'm going to run the church. Amen. But God says, no, you're not. Jesus said, I will build my church. Amen. Praise God. When we begin to line up with what God wants to do, then we're going to begin to see the move of God in our lives. Amen. Could it be this morning what you have envisioned for your life does not align with what God has planned for you? Amen. Amen. The cave of Adullam, that place of refuge. In many ways, church, the cave of Adullam represents the church. Amen. It was just like the church. It was that place of refuge. Amen. We come to the house of God to seek God's presence, to hear His words, to come and to receive of God. Amen. Jesus told them, He said, it is the sick that need a physician. It's the sick that need a physician. As I said, the cave of Adullam, of Adullam is a lot like the church. It said as we began to read in your hearing that when He finally quit running, amen, and He got into this cave, uh, that is said, and when His brother and all His father's house heard it, they came to Him. And it said, and everyone that was in distress, uh, everyone that was in debt, uh, everyone that was discontented, gathered themselves unto Him, and He became captain of them, and there was about 400 men. Ah, this was not the way David thought uh, his throne was going to begin. Amen. Uh, this was not what he had envisioned Sister Heidi as being king. Uh, hey, he was thinking of a palace and a throne. Amen. But here he was uh, in a cave. Uh, let me tell you this morning, uh, all that matters is you in a place uh, where God can speak and talk to you. Amen. Don't you worry about the outward things, amen. You get where God can speak to you, amen. When we get ourselves in that place of preparation and allow God to move like He wants to move, amen, you will begin to see things fall in order. Did they not begin to come to Him? They were looking for something. People come to the house of God looking for the Word of God that's going to meet them right where they are. Amen. They don't need to be entertained. People don't need to be uh, uh, tickling ears and to be made feel good and having motivational speeches. Amen. 
They need some, the sick need somebody that they can go to and give them the word and give them nasty medicine that'll do them good. Amen. Praise God. We as children of the Most High have got to get to a place where we can make a difference in people's lives. I said it before and I'll say it again. I don't want you to leave the house of God and say, Brother Warren did a good job. That's insulting to God and it's insulting to the church and I know many people mean well, but what I desire and what God desires is when you leave the house of God for you to say, God was in that place. We don't need no earthly names attached to it. We need to see the Master Give Him praise in the house this morning. Hallelujah. It is in the tough places, brothers and sisters. Many of the greatest exploits that you will read in the Bible, Brother Sean, come from David's mighty men. You want to read about something? Start reading about David's mighty men and the, and the feats that they wrought. Supernatural feats. Amen. Men who were unknown to the world, but came down looking for a king. Amen. Are you looking for a king this morning? Are you looking for the king this morning? These men came looking for the presence of God. Amen. It does not happen when you are struggling in your flesh, trying to do what only can be done in the spirit. Amen. Allow yourself access into the place of retreat, that secret place. David did, and the people, as I said, began to come. People like David at the time. People that did not have anything to offer but themselves, but were willing to work and obey. Oh, is that maybe somebody here this morning? Are you willing to work and obey what thus saith the Lord? Amen. Praise God. Three types of people are mentioned, and I'll just touch on them briefly. Amen. Praise God, which kind of goes over everybody when we talk spiritually. Amen. The distressed are people who are being pressed upon. Are you distressed this morning? Stress, anguish, depression, anxiety, hopelessness, fear, worry, doubt, low self-esteem. Amen. Is that you this morning? Are you distressed? Amen. Well, if you are, you've come to the right place because the King is here. Amen. Praise God. People searching for God, knowing that the hand of God was upon David. You have to understand at that time, that time, they had seen the exploits of David. Even though David was running from Saul, everybody knew that the hand of God was upon David. They could have went to Saul and his army, but you know what? They were willing to go out of the beaten path and find a cave where the king was, where the anointing was, where the presence of God was. Is that you this morning? Amen. The discontented are those who, whose results are falling, Sister Tangent, beneath the expectations for whatever reasons. Let me say that again. The discontented are those whose results are falling beneath their expectations for whatever reasons. They know there is more than they are experiencing. Is that you this morning? You know, you've read, you've heard what God said. You know that the Bible said signs and wonders will follow believer. And you say, well, Brother Warren, I'm reading and I'm fasting and I'm praying. And I don't understand, amen, why we're not seeing a greater move of God. The discontent. The discontented, those who are expecting more and not getting the results out of what they're doing. Amen. Is that you this morning? Praise God. Are you there? Are you looking for something you can't quite put your hands on? Debt. It said those that were in debt. Debtors represent enslavement. Whether naturally or spiritually, they are enslaved to others and are looking to be set free. Amen. You'd be surprised as a pastor what you hear from different people. Oh, you don't see it in the church on a Sunday morning. But there's so many that need to be set free this morning. Amen. 
It does not have to be monetary for you to be in debt. Amen. I ask you this morning, are you bound? This morning, listen to me this morning, you don't have to be bound anymore. Just like the old song says, you don't have to be bound, church. You don't have to be bound. Those are the ones that come to the King looking for answers. Amen. Where are you this morning, church? Are you struggling within yourself? uh, Trying to find contentment? Are you trying to find peace? Have you lost your joy this morning? Is that you this morning? Amen. Praise God. David, listen. David had great faith at one time. David had great faith, Sister Tangy, when he told Goliath, he said, you come at me with a sword and a spear and a shield. He said, but I come in the name of the Lord of hosts. Amen. David had great faith, Brother Jimmy. Amen. He had great faith. But when all of a sudden you began to see things go south in David's life, amen. But then later we read this, uh, when he was fleeing uh, from Saul, it says he went, amen, and he come to Nob, amen. And he lied to the priest, amen, because he was afraid that he would be exposed to where he was at. And he lied to the priest, and the priest gave him holy showbread. And there was a servant of Saul named Doeg, that was there and he seen it and he went and he told Saul and he went back and he killed 85 priests at Nob because David lied and David went there. We see David's faith had turned to fear. Amen. He ended up at Nob and he caused great death. Because of pressure and fear, he fled from Saul into the enemy's territory <clears throat> territory, and had to pretend, uh, Sister Tangy, to be a madman with spittle running down his beard, scratching on the doorpost. Amen. He found himself uh, running from one situation into another bad situation that all of a sudden he was there and they recognized who he was. Amen. He went down to Gath where Goliath was from and all of a sudden they began to say, is this not the one that they sang? Saul killed his thousand and David killed his ten thousands. Amen. And all of a sudden the Bible said David's heart was full of fear because he realized that he done jumped out of the frying pan into the fire. Amen. And he's writing about these things in the Psalms. Amen. His faith had turned to fear. Praise God. Praise God. Because of the pressure and fear. Amen. He fled from one bad situation to another. Be honest with yourself this morning. Who is guiding your ship this morning? I'm asking you this morning, who's guiding your ship? Is it Jesus? Or are you still wrestling with Him at the helm? Jesus is trying to steer you in a direction and you're trying to pull it back over here. Yet you say, I'm serving God, but you're fighting over here for the things of the world. Amen. Praise God. God is not going to fight with you. Amen. He told you the way it should be. He told you what it was. Faith and fear depends on who you can trust. Faith and fear depends this morning on who you can trust. You can trust Jesus, but we cannot trust ourselves to govern our own lives. This is the very reason Jesus come. If we could have done it on our own, Jesus wouldn't have had to come and sacrifice Himself like He did. Amen. Do you love Him this morning? Church, I believe the message of Adullam is a message of having a determined mind, body, and soul going forward. David had a past. He come to a crossroads and he said, I can't live like this any longer. Amen. I've got to hear from God and I've got to see what God is going to do. Amen. He anointed me king. He said, I'm going to be a king. Now I'm sitting here and I'm waiting on God. Are you going to do what you said you were going to do, Lord? Amen. That's where we have to get. Amen. We have to be determined going forward. Determined to see like David what God will do for you and I this morning. In the next few months you will see 
Chaos in this country, church. You're going to see chaos in this country. Regardless of who wins the election, praise God, you're going to see chaos. And I, let me just add this, and not make this a doom and gloom service, amen. Regardless of who wins, it's going to be chaos from the other side, amen. But what we don't need and we need to pray against is that something doesn't come up to where we don't have an election. Amen. Some circumstance or situation arises where we don't even have an election. We don't need that. Amen. Praise God. Things are coming down the pipe. God is preparing His church. Amen. In the coming days there will be great adversity and confusion. Hard times and difficulties. But God is calling you into your destiny for such a time as this. Esther was born in a time where God could use her. You and I are born into the... It was an accident that you were born in this day and age. Amen. God is calling you into your destiny this morning. That place of preparation and surrender to the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Search the Bible from back to front or front to back. All the great men and women of the Bible were forged through adversity and difficult situations. We talked about Joseph a while back. We talked about Moses. We talked about Peter and Paul and on on and on. Jeremiah, Isaiah. Amen. All the great ones from beginning to end, amen, were forged. Their lives and their character was forged through adversity and circumstances. They, th- there are those under the sound of my voice who are putting their hopes and their trust on things getting easier and better. Let me tell you this morning, there might be areas at times that get a little bit better. But overall, things are not getting better, church. They're not getting better. The world is racing towards tribulation and great tribulation. But I'm here to tell you this morning, David said, I have seen... I have not seen the righteous forsaking nor their seed begging bread. God always provides for His people this morning. In this life, the Bible said, you will have tribulation. But Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Again, I say to you, hard times require more effort. Impossible things require more faith. Amen. Let go and let God, church, learn from David this morning and trust God with all your have. Amen. Who this morning, I'm asking you this morning, who this morning is willing to lay their hands on the horns of the altar and say like David, I will not let go until I hear from God and God tells me what I am to do. Please stand with me this morning. Amen. God loves you, church. God loves you. I feel like with all of my heart, God is calling us into our destiny. We need right now to walk in the greatest faith that we ever have. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I do not believe there's been a time in history, and this is Brother Warren's opinion. Amen. But I don't believe there's been another time in history that that God's people has, has endured such spiritual warfare as today. I'm not talking about physical persecution like those that were beheaded, crucified, fed to the lions. That was terrible. I'm talking about the mental anguish of the spiritual battles in these last days. The demonic hordes are being turned loose. Amen. There is stuff going on all around us. Amen. And God is saying you've got to have a made up mind. You need to find your cave of Adullam. Amen. You can't run. There's nowhere you can hide from the enemy. Amen. The best thing you can do is get rooted and grounded with God. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed this morning in the church. I want to give you an opportunity this morning. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I want to give you this opportunity to get right with God. To make it right. 
Amen. If you don't feel in your heart that if the Lord come back today and split the eastern skies, that you would be ready to go back with Him, I want to give you an opportunity to come up to these altars this morning and say, Lord God, I'm willing to get right with you. Amen. Is there one under the sound of my voice that is willing to say, Brother Warren, Pastor, I, 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 I want to get saved. I'm not saved this morning, but I, I, I want to be. I want Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life. Is there one in the house of the Lord this morning? Is there one? Amen. Praise God. Is there one? Amen. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. Come on up to these altars. You get right with God. Amen. You get right. You cry out to Jesus. You cry out to Him with a sincere heart. Come on, Brother Sean. You cry out to Him with a sincere heart, and He will answer you. Amen. He is able, more than willing, He desires this morning to let you, to get you where you have peace in your heart. Is there any others in the house of God that is willing to be honest with God? I'm not putting pressure on you. Amen. If I can scare you into salvation, somebody can scare it back out of you. Amen. I'm just giving you an opportunity this morning to get right with God. Is there one under the sound of my voice this morning that maybe